Hi everyone, my name is Jennifer Walsh and welcome to this episode of A Walk with Walsh where I'm with Steve Nigren. And I have to say, I've never been to such a magical place in my life, ever. Like I can't, I can't believe where I'm standing right now. Thank, thank you. you. For, thank you for having us. Well, you see what happens when you just honor nature. Magic happens. This is, we're at Seren B. We're at 20 minutes outside of Atlanta. That's right, 20, uh, 20 minutes from the airport, 35 minutes from the center of the city. And like, I, I've only been here two days and I, I, I'm from New York, I love New York, but I think I might stay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we like. So will you give us a little, tell us a little bit about what, what made you create Seren B. I mean, I've read all the stories, but it's such a compelling story, Steve, and I'm so thankful and appreciative to have this time with you because I know you're busy. So tell us why. Well, Serenby is a result of having the courage to go into the unknown. Oh. Because <laughs> um, we were living in the city with the perfect life. In Atlanta, correct? In Atlanta. Okay. In, in an uh, urban uh, community, one of the 1900 communities right in the center of the city. Sure. Uh, we had one of the largest lots. Hmm. I could walk two blocks to Symphony Hall and the High Museum and the restaurants on Peachtree. I could walk three blocks the other way to Piedmont Park and the yeah. Botanical Gardens. Life seemed perfect. We were not searching for anything. And what year was this? I was a hospitality guy, mm -hmm. and this was 1991. Okay. We were opening restaurants around the country. Wow. And um, we saw on the back of the Georgia Preservation Newsletter that there was a historic farm for sale just south of the airport. Okay. So, but you weren't shopping. You weren't shopping for any property, correct? Children were three, five, and seven, and any time you have small children, you're yes. always looking for something to do of on course. a Saturday afternoon. <laughs> That's the truth. So I called, clarified we weren't interested in buying anything, but would they mind if we pulled in yeah. to show the kids any farm animals they might have? Oh. And anyone with something for sale says, come on. <laughs> of course, come on We in. arrived, the Shetland pony was saddled, and we bought the farm that afternoon. You're kidding. So oh. I say, <laughs> The land found us because this was totally unintentional. Interesting. And it's interesting that you say it because this is the most intentional place I've ever seen. Thank you. It's true. But it's incredible. This is all about common sense. Mm -hmm. And now today it looks like it's intentional, but it's actually just working with nature and what's here. Yeah. And it's very much how we would have developed a hundred years ago. That's what I love that you've done this because because we are losing that sense of community and everyone seems to be looking for it because they're not experiencing it themselves. Yet you've created this oasis that is so much about community and it's so much about how we are living and of course being thankful for the land and preserving it but educating people in a way that they might have forgotten. And it's like you said, common sense and it's simple but it's beautiful. Right. I mean, look at this. And I said, thank you for ordering the day. <laughs> this is Chamber of Commerce weather, so thank you very much. And we're very fortunate. We have wonderful weather yeah. when we're doing something like taping this or an event. Uh, but then we have our rains and of what course. have you. But it seems to be in balance. So I think when, mm. you, when you work with nature in balance, it yeah. works back with you. I love that. When we were talking before, we even went on camera, you said, when you honor nature, nature honors you. That's right. I love that. I think I might have to put that somewhere because that's a beautiful quote, Steve. That's really, but you're absolutely right. And you can see right. today's an example of it. Yeah, yeah. Can I ask you, what was the first, there is the Serenby, the inn at Serenby. Mm -hmm. Is that the first piece of? Well, what happened is um, we rented the old 1905 farmhouse out. Okay. Uh, my wife fixed the shack in the back Okay. In case we ever wanted to spend the night. Oh, if you ever wanted to. We envisioned coming out a couple afternoons sure. a month, maybe get horses That's for it. the kids, mm -hmm. you know. To my amazement, the kids wanted to come every weekend, wow. every vacation. And we had all the material things, you know, the, the pool, the media room, the yeah. robot cars, all the electronic stuff. Oh, wow. And this is where they wanted to come. Hmm. And so that was my value shift. Okay. And uh, so I sold everything, resigned all the boards, and moved full time in '94. Wow! And by was it just like that? Was it like an automatic feeling that you just had, like uh, almost like a gut? You just had to do it. Well, or is it really like okay, maybe we'll take some time and think about this one for a while? Do you remember after 9/11 mm -hmm. how everyone reevaluated their lives? Yeah. 
And that lasted for maybe 48 hours? Yes. Well, I had that same thing happen to me in a slow drip over the three years. Wow. Of, okay, what's really important? Yeah. Why? So every weekend, mm -hmm. we would have this wonderful experience with just simplicity. Yeah. And this is where, when we slowed down to simply be, mm -hmm. we found the serenity we were looking for, and that's where the name Serenity came from. Oh, I love that. But so, that slow drip over the three years. Sure. And, you know, I was very involved in boards, mm -hmm. uh, supporting political candidates, many didn't win. Okay, yep. And so there was a little bit of resignation that I was in all the right places, knew all the right people. Yeah. We had, we had a restaurant on Pennsylvania Avenue, with, you know, uh, just down from the U.S. Capitol, so I knew all, I, oh, I, yeah. I, I knew people that I should be able to call. Sure, sure. And it was very frustrating, you could see what was happening. And so all this was building. And after a wonderful long weekend, one Monday morning, mm -hmm. now I'd had an opportunity to sell the companies, to sell okay. the house. All this was kind of lining up. Moving around, yeah. I just had to make the decisions. And that one Monday morning, I said, okay, I'm stepping off the treadmill. Really? It, and it was, it was a feeling of resignation, not anger, yeah. but just I can't, mm. I can't even have an effect, but I can put my arms around my family and we can move out here and grow our own food. Yeah. And the girls were six, eight, and 10. Oh my gosh. And we stepped off the treadmill. Hmm. And then on the three years that we had been coming out, we fixed one of the old barns so that we had guest rooms for all of our city friends. Okay. And then when we moved here full time, we had these two fabulous guest house and we discovered more friends than we realized. <laughs> sure. Everyone's and now so, calling you up, emailing, when can we, uh, when can we book a little room? All sorts of stories about this, you know? At the end, yes. And so, uh, after uh, a couple of years of this, we declared we were a bed and breakfast oh my with gosh. rates to sort of control that. And so to. it was kind of fun. Weekends, people would come out. Yeah. And that was the beginning of the end. Wow. And then, of course, when we did the community, we moved out of the, the house mm -hmm. and the entire grounds became a a, wow. a uh, country inn. You yeah. know, we have uh, 30 rooms here and another 20 over in the community. So we have over 50 rooms here. 50 rooms. That's incredible. Because you did that and it was all, as you said, like common sense, intentional but not intentional. But the way you grew around nature, because to me that's everything. So it's about giving back to the land, using the land for food, for how you build the homes here. I mean, how did you, how did you know how to do that? You came from hospitality, so all of a sudden you were able to then build. So as I look back on my life, I realized that it was all building blocks for what we were about to do. So interesting. Uh, I grew up on a Colorado farm. Mm -hmm. We are, I was the fifth generation on these farms and we're Swedish in heritage. Okay. So I think it's in the DNA to be concerned about other people and the general yeah. thing from that sw Swedish attitude. Sure. And then we were on farm. I could hardly wait to get off the farm, oh. and I went to the University of Colorado and started as an architect in architectural oh, school. Oh, okay. Then I realized how hard that was going to be, and I was mm -hmm. seduced by the hospitality industry through oh, a part-time right. job. Wow. And then I uh, went into the hospitality and started no opening restaurants and ended up on a hotel opening team for Stouffer's. No kidding. They brought me to Atlanta, oh. and, and I stepped off the treadmill yeah. to stay in Atlanta, and I opened my own restaurant to stay here. And then I built that to 32 uh, restaurants. Oh my gosh. And here we are. And here you are. It's magical and uh, for me to kind of see it in the way it is today. Does it look like, like totally just something surreal to you? Because I know that you've created this, but does it feel surreal to you that you've built this? When I'm walking and sharing it with someone else, and sometimes I look in the streets and yeah. I say, my God, no wonder everybody thought I was crazy. <laughs> How do we ever think we could do this out in the middle of this forest? Yeah. And here we are. Yeah. But it was a dear friend, Ray Anderson, who's one of the great early environmentalists. Mm -hmm. uh, when the White House created the Council on the Environment, he was the first chair. Okay. He created um, Interface Carpet. And then when he read Paul Hawkins' mm -hmm. book, sure. it changed his life. And he was the first US industrialist to put his company on a carbon neutral footprint. Oh, wow. No kidding. And so Ray was a dear friend, and so he entertained here when we were just living here running a bed and breakfast. 
So I learned, I met a lot of the big environmental leaders of the day in the 90s. Okay. And so then in 2000, when we became concerned that urban sprawl might find us, yeah. first reaction was to just buy more land. You know, I'm, I'm going to hold, save my backyard. Yeah. yeah. And then I realized that uh, once at a thousand acres, I couldn't keep showing up for these closings. And a thousand acres really doesn't protect you in the path of urban sprawl. Mm. And so I asked Ray, yeah. thinking he would know some bright person that could come help me figure this out. <laughs> yes. And uh, Ray invited the Rocky Mountain Institute to come oh. out. And so they brought thought leaders here hmm. in September of 2000, 23 thought leaders here for two days. Oh my gosh. And so this really put us at the forefront, a lot of the global environmental issues yeah. that are sort of, we understand them today. Mm. 20 years ago, this was a bunch of liberal yeah. uh, ideas. Yeah. Uh, and it was before the first LEED certified building had been certified. Today, every Fortune 500 company requires a certified building. Yeah. So how far we have come. Yeah. And it reminds me of where we are with the health issue today. We know That's, something has to change. Absolutely. A lot of people are trying things but we really don't have the path that's going to solve this or get us out of this. Yeah. And uh, there's so many questions of what, what should we do next or how do, who do we go to? And I feel like you have brought the right people here to really understand soil health. How do we use the land for food, for protection, for homes, for everything to really um, bring back the land to what it should be and also use it in the best way possible. It's, I believe, our built environment. Mm -hmm has a lot to do with our health. Mm, yes. And research is starting to come out to show that. Mm. One of the most important things for health and some of the common diseases is connection to nature and connection to one another. I totally get that. <laughs> and we have been building yes. places to separate us from both of those over the last several decades. Yeah. And you'll see Serenby, it absolutely connects everyone. You mm -hmm. go out your front door, you're in community sure. with porches pulled up to the street but yet you go out the back door and you're in nature. And so this is the one unique place that you don't have to choose about living in one or, or the, the other. other. That's fascinating. You're absolutely right. I don't know any other place like that. No. Now, if you look at some of the, your old communities. Yeah, you're right, you're the, right. The countryside of England was mm -hmm. one of our good models because the winding road and yes. there's just one row on each side and the back opens to the common foot paths and nature. So that was our best model that we found. And they held zoning in place because after World War II, they couldn't afford the urban sprawl because the island was only so big. Of course. So they put good land laws in. Interesting, really interesting. Would you actually mind taking us to somewhere that you think is, you're excited about or somewhere special that you really would love to show us? I'd love to, let's go see it. Let's go check it out, sounds good. Well, I had seven years in retirement, and I call it my seven years in the wilderness. Okay. And so I walked these trails, cut these trails, sat by the waterfall, got lost in nature. Literally. And I believe that was my seven years of readjustment. Uh, I worked with one of the great young psychologists, Robert Johnson, who came out of retirement to work with me. Because as I was out in nature, I was... I was feeling this huge sense of change and I did not know how to process it. Really? And a, a friend connected us with Robert Johnson who was on the West Coast and okay. retired, has written many of the books, He, We, She, Dream Interpretation. Yeah. And I was having dreams and all sorts of things. And so I worked with him for one year. I'd go five, uh, five days at a time. Really? And I didn't realize any of this. Sure. So I realized this, this seven years in the wilderness, yeah. if you will, yep. the various things that happened. And by the time we decided to do this, and then Phil Tab came in as our land planner, yeah. I knew every rock and tree as we walked. So uh, all, the all these components yeah, have together. just come together in a very interesting, beautiful way. Non orchestrated. Mm -hmm. I could not have imagined pulling this That's all together. That's what it's supposed to happen. It's yeah. supposed to happen. Yeah. Literally, that's, I think that's when they call whatever they call the flow, where when you're really in that place of meaningful, purposeful, you know, life. It's, um, for some people, they search for it. That's right. And they try so hard, and when things kind of just happen, because you want to protect things, because you know it, and you feel it. How many homes are here now? We have about 300 with another 60 under construction. Wow. Are they are any for sale right now, or are they? 
we, we, we always have houses for sale and various So can horses I move in tomorrow? And, uh, we could probably find you <laughs> okay, something or right. we could get it finished in the next couple okay, of weeks. Come okay. on, we'll find you a place temporarily while <laughs> okay, you're doing okay, okay. it. Anyway. But you see, Porsches are pulled up. Uh, people are walking down the street. You're talking to neighbors. Yeah. It's just a different sense sure. uh, of, yes. of what happens. Now, anytime you see our street lights, did you notice our wonderful street lights? I, I noticed. Not only is that a street light, but it's a beacon that there's a public path to lead you somewhere. Oh. So, we so have, whenever you see one, uh, you'll yeah, see that, you'll, see, you'll know see, it's a you path. You go, that's a path that oh, way. Oh, okay. And the entire community is laid out with wandering streets and omegas, but a grid of paths so you can reach everywhere oh. by path. A lot faster. And now we are headed to Motto, which is our community about health and wellness. Now, if you look both ways, see these beacons? These are the oh. street lights for this area. Oh my gosh. And the, the, the wow. uh, artist, Robert Rausch, designed these. And yes. as they came about and were emerging, yeah. we realized they're beacons of new light as we're dealing with health. Oh gosh, Steve. I love it. I just now here you see the, the attention Scandinavian to coming. detail is unreal. Every little nuance of everything, of every nook and cranny, I'm I'm below. I've never seen anything like it. Well, Again, I can't even stop the myself. The research is now coming out. The beauty actually does affect our physical health. Yeah, and yes, this just naturally evolved yeah. the the beauty in architecture mm -hmm. as well as nature. Yeah is very combined. important and we feel it yes you, you, you notice i can see you smiling i haven't stopped smiling steve since i got here notice most <laughs> of the people walking on the street everyone says hello are to smiling. each other they're waving it's very different than new york city so i'm very happy to be here and everyone's waving to each other but you're right it's it's just everyone feels it in their heart i said when i got here i felt like my heart was exploding like i was just so joyful to be here we're going right, to go for go a walk see. all right let's go check it out so this is a very different building that I'm looking at in front of me. What? So this is inspired from Scandinavia. Okay. Uh, this was two residential courtyards wow. uh, in Stockholm that inspired me. And so if you can see the, the awe. It is the, you, and look at the blue. Blue, and at night this all becomes just illuminated. Oh so gosh. We can have the awe in our buildings that we have in nature. In nature. Now, there's another building that corresponds to it that will be constructed over there. Okay. So when you're driving down, this will be two towers you're driving into, and you'll literally drive into this square. And I can see, and then the street is so small, and it's just it, so great because it's, 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 it's it quiet. It's quiet. It tinches. Yes, it tinches. Now, okay. if you go through the future arches there, you'll see we're building 16 cottages there that are all surround, or in the midst of a medicinal garden and we're oh. teaching people how to harvest their front yard oh my gosh again it's just all, all simple things it's all simple so you see here's a very european square yeah the, the porches up here these are four manor houses okay these porches have their own fireplace wine oh. bar and cappuccino machine are any of them available for sale let's talk let's talk afterwards for yes. sure Okay, but so there are how many units in here altogether? Uh, this is four here. Four. Okay, four here. And then on the other side, we'll be building six. Six more. Okay, got it. Wow, this is just. So I you mean, see, and this, then when you like walk through this, it's just it's so look, look beautiful. At this view. Like it's it every nook and cranny when you look down a thoroughfare, it's like it's like you said ah, you feel just the beauty of it is just stunning. And it's you see stunning. here we are in a very urban square. I mean, this yeah. is very urban. Yep yet you're being pulled into nature yeah and vice right. versa if you're on that hill you yes. see this beautiful architecture you and you're pulled back it. into community like you said like one step in and one step out all the time it's, it's, it's that a, continuous flow it's a constant it really is now straight ahead you see at the very far end that is a earthen circle that's fabulous for meditation oh, that's wow. inspired from the skull the earth sculpture at the aspen institute in colorado oh okay um, Wow. This is just a very European, simple uh, oh architecture gosh. for the walkway. Uh, all medicinal grasses and things. This is all stormwater management. I heard, I'm not sure some of the women were telling me, you can actually eat most of the things that you've planted along the streets. You can. And okay. this is in um, Mado, we're focusing 
primarily on uh, medicinal, but you can eat a good portion of them. Wow. In Grange, which is agriculture, mm -hmm. it's not just that the farms are there. All of our common area is edible. So at every crosswalk are blueberry bushes. I saw There's that. There's banks of figs, um, wow. uh, service berries, uh, I apple saw trees, rosemary. peaches, rosemary. I mean, oh, it's, gosh. it's so common yeah. sense. Why do we continue doing lawns and turf yeah. when people respond and get excited about edibles? Yeah. I mean, when the blueberry season comes out, this whole community becomes even more alive. I bet. And people are out picking and having fun and talking about what to do with it. And oh my gosh. And there's a dog running over there. Look I mean, at that. It's nature. It's nature. And even when I was driving around before in my golf cart, which I love, is I saw the horses rolling around in the grass. Just everyone. It's almost like it's so good that it feels so natural to be here. And you know, it's this natural. Just, yeah. Yes. It's authentic. You know, when some people talk about all the components, they think, oh, this is, you know, it wow. must be plastic, it must Look be imaginary. It's natural. Are all the building materials made of, I mean, I can see, like, this is, like, slate, it looks like. It's, yeah, I, I mean, mean st stone comes from, this is Tennessee uh, flagstone. This okay. is all Georgia granite. Wow. So these are all things that come sure. uh, from the south. You know, the bricks, yeah. the, uh, the bricks you know, it's factories. It, it's all very natural. All of our houses are... Uh, Earthcraft certified, okay. uh, which is a certification in Georgia and the South. It, in fact, they were the predecessor in LEED certification for homes. In fact, oh, they were before sure. LEED was certified. This started uh, really? right here in Georgia. And I so didn't know all that. of our uh, houses here have to be certified. Okay. And most of them are Earthcraft certified. Wow. And look at this. This is the meditation garden. Here are we are. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Steve, this is just, just beautiful. It's so thoughtful. It really, to my heart, because I've been studying nature for so long and spending the past 20 years of my life in beauty, um, I've always felt that connection from beauty to nature. But like we discussed, the power of awe just to be here and, and acknowledge it and say, wow, this is so absolutely breathtakingly beautiful in every way. Now we're getting ready for a 15k race tomorrow. I, uh, I heard about and this. So I'm a little jealous. We, we have several hundred people here okay. and it's really fun because they're out on the trails and sure. they're wandering around and they've come through nature and they, they come about here and you see in the circle we have a drumming circle going on oh, and wow. so they, they, they know that they're well well past yeah. the halfway they're yeah. feeling powerful and then they realize this path turns oh, and mile six is straight up the hill. Oh, the, <laughs> that's torture. That's torture. But they keep coming back for more. Yeah. And you can imagine how alive everyone feels yeah. after having run through nature like that. You're running through nature. You're things. eating the food from the land that you actually harvested yourself. You're going back to your home. And again, it's like the sense of community. Everyone is together. That's right. And I just, I think the people, 700, how many people live here? We have 700 now with okay. someone moving in every week. God. And how many do you hope to, is there like a cap that you are thinking about saying, okay, that might be too much, or are you kind of? Now, here's a really important thing. Okay. Because we have 70% preservation for anything that's allowed under agricultural zoning. Yeah. That's unheard of. There's yeah. no place uh, in the United States that has that in its zoning. The density that happens in the 30% mm -hmm. is okay. Oh, wow. So you see, we've come through decades of thinking that mm -hmm. development is awful mm -hmm. because we've done such a poor job I'm of doing it. it. Mm -hmm. But as long as we're only densifying the 30% in this greater 65,000 acres, yeah. you can do. we yeah. have only begun to accommodate people and businesses for a new model on how we should be living. Absolutely. And I believe as we start looking at uh, autonomous cars, yes. uh, shared transportation, yeah. uh, we're going to have to move to clustered walkable communities, no matter where they are. And, I can understand and we why. are now an example yeah. of how you can have clustered communities connected then mm -hmm. through bike trails, paths, and yeah. uh, central stations where community transportation can pick you up to take you to the hard rail or whatever it is. Steve, 
I know you have such limited time, and this has been absolutely beautiful in, in every way, from the weather to the breeze to the, I mean, look at this. Like you say, when you walk through and then you see this, I mean, it's beautiful. And I'm so appreciative for your, not only your time, but to know you and to have met you last year in Italy at the Global Wellness Summit. And here we are just a few months later. I knew I had to just get to know you better. And you have such a beautiful story. And it's so, um, it touches me so deeply. And I'm just so thankful that I, uh, I feel like I just want to move in tomorrow and be a part of your community in so many different ways. So thank you for everything you're doing. Thank you for your time. And uh, I appreciate all of it, Steve. Thank you. Thank you for being a part of the show. And I know you've got something else you want to say. I'm sorry, I'm cutting you off. Anytime you want to walk the streets of Serenby or the trails, I would love you to. just let me know. I would love to. Genthi, thank you. Everyone, this has been so much fun. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.